Which Bridgerton character escaped a tragic fate? And what romances never should have happened? Most importantly, were the love scenes always supposed to be that steamy? We know that no adaptation is totally true to the books, so keep watching while we expose Bridgerton's biggest changes from page to screen. A meeting to remember. The Netflix adaptation captured plenty of amazing Simon Daphne moments, but would you believe that they went totally off the book for the pair's first meeting? In the show, Daphne meets Simon while avoiding Nigel Burbrook, but in the book, their introduction is a bit more eventful. As he arrives at Lady Danbury's, Simon overhears a confrontation between Daphne and Nigel and decides to step in and play the hero. But by the time he arrives on the scene, Daphne has already handled the problem by knocking Nigel out cold. Simon is immediately drawn to this self-sufficient woman, and the two get their flirt on, until Simon realizes he's hitting on his friend's baby sis. Yikes. Luckily, we still got to see Daphne show Nigel her right hook. The writers just put the moment later in the show. And as a bonus, we get to see Simon defend Daphne's honor. So chivalrous. Sharing Secrets as Daphne and Simon taught us, nothing's sexier than a secret. But in the books, there's one other person in on their plan. In the show, we see Anthony have a majorly overprotective moment. When the Viscount sees Simon courting his sister, he totally loses his cool. But things could have been very different. In the book, things get so bad that Simon and Daphne are forced to tell him about their scheme. The result is a hilariously awkward conversation in which Daphne declares both men to be idiots. But even with Anthony in on the secret, he's still suspicious of the dashing do. Once he agrees to their plan, he issues a warning to his former friend. If I ever catch you kissing her bloody hand without a chaperone, I shall tear your head off. Savage. We guess it makes sense that the show's writers decided to keep Anthony in the dark, especially since he had so much extra drama to deal with. Sienna's Swan Song while Simon and Daphne's love story took center stage, Anthony and Sienna were a close second. The star-crossed lovers spent the season battling their class differences before finally ending their steamy affair. But did you know that those heart-wrenching scenes almost didn't happen? So what's the tea? Well, for starters, Sienna's character got a major upgrade. In the books, it's established that Anthony had an affair with an opera singer named Maria Russo, who served as the inspiration for Sienna's character. But while Anthony and Sienna's love story was passionate and tragic, the book's version was way less juicy. Anthony and Maria's affair was strictly business, and once the story picks up, we never see them get intimate. Since their relationship happened before the first Bridgerton novel begins, Maria is only ever mentioned in the past tense, and the only time we see her, it's Anthony asking to resume their previous relationship. We have to say, this is one change we're glad the show made. Giving Anthony a more substantial relationship forced the eldest Bridgerton to grow up fast and set him up perfectly for his starring role in season two. Not to mention, we got the chance to see the young Viscount in action, if you know what we mean. A controversial choice. One of Bridgerton's most controversial scenes is definitely the moment when Daphne takes control of her marital situation by seducing the Duke and then holding him in place as she attempts to get pregnant. The scene raised a lot of eyebrows and a lot of questions about consent within marriage. The show's decision to include the questionable scene was a big one, but they did make some major changes. For one thing, Daphne learns the truth in a very different way. In the show, she puts the pieces together herself and runs to her maid for confirmation. Then she seduces Simon and only confronts him about his lies after the deed has been done. But in the book, Daphne figures things out while in bed with Simon and confronts him directly. After they fight, Simon goes out drinking, and then when he comes home, Daphne takes advantage of the situation and attempts to have Simon get her pregnant. Author Julia Quinn writes, he was in her control, she realized. He was asleep and probably still more than a little bit drunk, and she could do whatever she wanted with him. As she makes love to her husband, Daphne realizes that she's the one with the power, and she takes advantage of the moment. She planted her hands underneath him, using all her strength to hold him against her. She would not lose him this time. She would not lose this chance. But in the show, Daphne's decision feels a lot more premeditated. We see Daphne stewing in her disappointment and plotting her next move. Meanwhile, Simon is completely oblivious, not realizing that Daphne has learned the truth. Then, when Daphne finally shows her hand, her husband is totally caught off guard. The show also made the decision to keep Simon sober for their tryst, rather than having Daphne seduce her drunk, sleeping husband like she does in the book. This probably factored into the show's careful handling of the tricky scene, because it gave Simon at least a little more control in the situation. No Laughing Matter 
We all know that the show nailed Daphne and Simon's wedding night. The scene was totally romantic and super sexy, but the major declaration of love could have just as easily been a total laugh fest. Like in the show, Daphne starts her wedding night wondering why her handsome new husband won't take her to bed. But rather than confronting Simon in anger, Daphne worries that his reluctance is linked to his claim that he can't have children. Not fully understanding the situation, Daphne tries to politely ask Simon if he's able to perform his marital duties, and he realizes that she thinks he's impotent. Rather than get upset, Simon bursts out laughing and then gets down to showing Daphne exactly what he's capable of. We have to admit, the show's version is definitely sexier, but there's something charming about the couple's hilarious misunderstanding. Either way, Daphne definitely comes out on top and ends up with a wedding night to remember. A Secret Revealed Bridgerton ends its series with a major reveal, but in doing so, it goes way off the rails. The Bridgerton series is eight books long, and season one only covers the events of the first one. But the final episode changes that, revealing a secret that's not explained until the fourth book of the series. As the final scenes of season one played, viewers learned that Lady Whistledown is none other than Penelope Featherington. It's a major reveal, and one that happens just months after Lady Whistledown's reports begin. In the novels, Penelope keeps her secret for 11 years. When the ton finally finds out the truth, it's Penelope's own husband, spoiler alert, it's Colin, who reveals her identity. Granted, he only does it to save her from a blackmail scheme. Once her secret is out, Penelope stops writing her column, which is a total bummer. Where else will everyone get their society tea? Hopefully the show's premature reveal doesn't mean that Penelope's ready to hang up her pen. We need those updates. A Royal Decree one thing the series gave us is the absolutely iconic Queen Charlotte. Paying homage to Britain's first mixed-race monarch was a bold choice from the Shondaland team, but it wasn't accurate to the books. For one thing, Queen Charlotte isn't a character in the books, she's never even mentioned, and she certainly wasn't trying to track down Lady Whistledown's identity. In fact, in the books, it's Lady Danbury who's desperate to track down the Gossip Queen's identity. Her absence also has a major effect on Daphne's story. Since there's no Queen Charlotte, there's no one to declare Daphne a flawless woman, and therefore Lady Whistledown never names her the diamond of the season. Instead, Daphne starts the book off as a promising prospect, but nowhere near as revered as she does in the show. Safe to say, including this fashionable monarch was a great choice. Even Bridgerton author Julia Quinn agrees, saying, I go back and forth between wishing I had actually written her in the books and then being glad I didn't, because I don't know if I could have done as good a job. An Unhappy Ending Marina Thompson doesn't have the happiest of storylines in the show, but it's still a big improvement on how she fared in the books. For one thing, she's not a cousin of the Featheringtons, she's actually distantly related to the Bridgertons. We also don't meet her until book 5, and she's never actually seen, because she's already dead. What happens in the show is mostly true to the novels. Marina was supposed to marry Philip Crane's older brother, but her lover died in the war. Philip married her instead, but she was so heartbroken that she tried to join her departed love by walking into a lake. Philip saves her, but she gets sick from the cold and dies soon after. By introducing Marina early in the show, we're hoping Netflix has plans to save her from her tragic fate, but we also know Shonda isn't afraid to kill off fan favorites, and Marina's death does set another Bridgerton's love story in motion. Fighting Words It's no secret that Simon's boxing scenes are some of the show's best moments. What's better than a handsome duke working out his frustration? But those scenes were totally invented by the writers. In the books, Simon has never seen boxing. However, the choice was a historically accurate one. Since boxing was a popular pastime in the early 1800s, the creators realized that it was the perfect way to get the Duke sweaty and shirtless. We're certainly glad it made it into the show, especially since it gave us such a hilarious confrontation between Simon and Anthony. We'd meet those two in the ring anytime. Not gonna lie, spilling all those secrets has us feeling like Lady Whistledown. Who'd have thought that some of our faves didn't even exist on the page? These reveals also raise some major questions about season two. Will we see more of Marina as her tragic fate plays out? And will Sienna become a romantic rival for Anthony's new love interest? So long as Penelope keeps writing, we know we'll get the tea, so long as she can manage to keep her biggest secret. What do you think? Did the books do it better? Or did these changes make the show a success? Let us know in the comments.